So yes, I say. So we, we see that in the book of Revelation chapter three, there he talks about their work being unfinished. Yeah. So he says imperfect, and then we did, we try to explain why he's saying that, which means their work needed to be perfect. Yeah. He says, I know your deeds. And then he says. I have not found any of your works meeting the requirements of my God. In other words, I have not found your works perfect. In other words, your works are imperfect. In other words, you are not living who you should be. As the prophet of the Lord said, prophet of Lord says, there is a place where the church is now and the place where the church ought to be. Amen? And this place where the church ought to be is the, is the place of perfection and holiness. This is the place of uh, of spiritual maturity, amen. And we tried to explain this last time how this uh, this spirit, this maturity, how the how perfection means maturity, and how it, that comes to mean holiness. How all these two, in fact, they are the three strands of the same cord, so to say. Yeah. We are talking about uh, perfection. We are talking about maturity. And, and when you look at it very well. You see that he's really talking about holiness, amen. Because you are talking about a high stature, and we read from Ephesians chapter four. But I would like to remind you of Revelation chapter one and two again, as we looked at the book of Genesis chapter one and two. We saw that there is this process of spiritual growth, amen. Hallelujah, which begins with separation, amen. Because it says. And darkness was upon the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering upon the surface of the waters. And then he said, let there be light, so that the light was good. And he divided the light from the darkness. So he begins with separation. And we say, this is the basis of your Christian life. That when he saves you, he separates you. To the extent that, if separation has not, not taken place in your life, then perhaps you must ask a question, are you born again? If separation has not taken place in your life, then perhaps you are not born again. Or should we say you are not born again? Because he cannot save you and you are not separate. Because he does not dwell with sin. In him there is no sin. In him there is no what? Darkness. says, God is light. In him there is no darkness. So you cannot claim to be in him yet you are still in darkness. Whereas he said in the book of Genesis chapter 1, let there be light. Amen. And he separated the light from the darkness. But if you are still walking in darkness, when he already commanded let there be light, and in him there is no darkness, but you are still walking in darkness, then it is evidently clear that you have not been separated. Amen? And also Corinthians testifies, because First Corinthians says, let them, he says, come out from among them. Amen? So let the people that are named after the Lord, let the people that are named, that that are named after the Lord, that carry upon themselves the name of the Lord. The other people that are named after the Lord, he says, let them come out from the field of this world. He says, how can you put together the temple of God and the temple of Satan? He says, it is impossible. Say, impossible. Yeah? So, first Genesis says, so we saw that the culmination of the process of growth in our spiritual walk with Christ is this. So after separation, then the culminating point, we say, it, now he is bringing us to this, this high calling. The high calling is this, to bear the image of God. Amen. To bear the image of Christ. That is the state of maturity that we must be what? Behold in this hour. If we are to be the church that will enter into the kingdom of God. Because he says, let us make men in our image, after our own likeness, and let them have dominion. So you see now, that when you are walking in spiritual maturity, then you are walking in authority, in the authority. Amen? Walking in spiritual maturity is walking in the authority of Christ, bearing the image of the Father. Because he says, let them have dominion. Amen? Let us make men in our own image, after our own likeness. So this place of bearing the image of Christ, this is the, spirit, this is the place of spiritual maturity. Amen. This is the place of spiritual maturity where, uh, 
uh, we are called the body of Christ. Where now, when people like, look at you, he says, he says, when people look at you, when you walk, wherever you go, you are the what? The church, yeah? But he calls you the body of Christ. Amen? He says, you are the body of Christ. Meaning, when you, where you go, Christ goes. Hallelujah. Your hands becomes the hands of Christ. Your eyes becomes the eyes of Christ. Your ears are the ears of Christ. Your nose is the nose of Christ. Your body is a member of Christ. Amen? Bearing the image of Christ. This place of spiritual maturity. What characterizes this place of spiritual maturity? Amen? And we saw that uh, uh, in the book of Ephesians there he said, he gave them pastors, he gave them apostles, number one, he gave them prophets, number two, he gave them pastors, he gave them teachers, he gave them evangelists. Why? The equipping of the saints. For the equipping of the saints. In order that? To edify the body of Christ. To edify the body of Christ. Uh -huh. Till we all come to the unity of faith. Till we all come to the unity to the unity of faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. To a perfect man. To a perfect man. Meaning, now there is this place called a perfect man. Where we are to, to the knowledge. What about the knowledge of God? Who says that? In the, the knowledge. knowledge of uh -huh. in the knowledge of the Son of God. Yes. Da? and become mature. He says, to a perfect man. Mm -hmm. So this place of perfection, this place of maturity, this place of attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. What is characterized by this one? Because we know that there is a place of infancy. Amen? There is a place of what? Infancy. infancy. In our walk with Christ, where we just become born again, then we are still young in the faith. Yet there is also a place of maturity. He says, where we ought to be. Amen? That every born again Christian who becomes, who comes to Christ as a baby, who becomes born again and then now begins his life as a baby Christian, must eventually reach that place of spiritual maturity. I love what the prophet of the Lord said. He said, Christ is not coming for an infant church. Amen? He's coming for a mature bride. Jesus Christ is not coming for a church that is still feeding on milk. Yes, we begin there. But we ought not to remain there. Amen? Just feeding on milk. Feeding on milk. He says, we ought to grow to become mature men and to a perfect man. Amen? There's a place where he says, 1 Corinthians says, says 1 Corinthians 13. In this, uh, in this discourse on, on love, uh, if you go to verse 11, he says, When I was a child. When I was a child? I spoke as a child. Uh huh. I understood as a child. Yes. And I felt as a child. Yes. But when I became a man, uh -huh. I put away childish things. Hallelujah. Do you see that? So he says there is a place of infancy where even your reasoning is childly. Childly. Child, childly. Child, childish. Amen. Childish reasoning. Where your thoughts are childish thoughts. Where your talk is childish talk. Eh? There's nothing wrong with becoming a, being a child, but eventually this child must grow up. If you remain a child for 15 years, or should I say, if this, look, in, in, in medicine we have this developmental chart of a baby. No? That a baby is expected to behave in a certain way at a certain age. The, the, the longer time goes, the time goes, the more this baby is expected to mature. If a time comes in the life of this child, five years old, 
that the child cannot speak. The parents put a question mark. Look, this baby needs to go to some therapist. Maybe he needs speech therapy. We go to pediatric, pediatrician. If a child is not walking, so what's the problem? Why is this baby just crawling? If a baby if a, eh, is old but is still sucking his thumb, or whatever, that, eh, even, even childish behavior, there is a place where they must be cut off. That, you know, there are some behaviors where the child, be, really childish behaviors where the child is throwing tantrums. Child is five years or six years is still throwing tantrums. Ten years still throwing tantrums. Like something is wrong with this child. Amen? There's a time where, where, where there's a place where childish behavior is acceptable and normal, so to say. But then a time comes when that childishness must be put away. Now we are talking about what? Maturity. Amen? So once I was young, but now I have become a man. Amen. And this place of maturity, what characterizes this place? One more place before we talk about this. In the book of Peter, again, Peter here tells us indeed that indeed there is a place where the church is childish, <laughs> and there is a place where the church ought not to be childish. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because eventually, childish behavior must be put aside. Hallelujah. <laughs> childish behavior. I'm too tired to go to church. Have you heard that before? <laughs> no? I'm very tired. I think God must forgive me today. <laughs> there is a place where the church is. And there is a place where the church ought to be. Mm -hmm. I think it's first Peter chapter two. And the place where the church ought to be is definitely not a childish place. Or oh, did I say that way? It's not a place of childishness. Mm -hmm. Is there such a word? Childishness. Hallelujah. Did I get it right? First Peter two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Desire spiritual milk. Yes, from this one. Would you like to read it? It says, mm -hmm. Read yourselves then of all demons. Yes. No more lying of hypocrisy or jealousy or insulting language. Mm. Be like newborn babies. Yes. Always thirsty for the pure spiritual milk. Hallelujah. So that by drinking it, you may grow up and be saved. Uh huh. Is Ver it? Verse 3. As the scripture says, I have Found out for yourselves how kind the Lord is. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So he says, now, there is this place where, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk. Amen? Mm -hmm. So that you may grow. But you see there now, he's saying, that you may grow. Not that you may remain babies. Mm -hmm. That you may grow. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But he's talking about pure spiritual milk. Unadulterated. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Unspoiled. So that by it, so this milk is meant to bring you to another level. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. It, it, it's not a place where you are out to remain until you enter heaven. It's a place where you come and then receive and then grow up. Hallelujah. Mm. Some people like to, be, to remain babies <laughs> uh, in this generation of ours. Crave pure spiritual mix, milk so that by it you may grow up. In your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Alright? So this is a place of immaturity. We call it that way. So, But, but you see also, he, he demarcates the place before Christ. You see the darkness there. He says, rid yourself of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander, and every kind. And slander of every kind. Amen? Because these are works of darkness. Now when you've been separated, now it says, now like newborn babies, because you've been separated from darkness, it says, now you must desire, you must hunger and thirst that you may grow. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Hunger and thirst for this spiritual milk. So, a state of spiritual immaturity, so to say. But if you go to the book of Hebrew, we find the Hebrew tells us something. 
Hebrews before Peter, huh? The book of Hebrews, I think, is Hebrews chapter 6. He said, oh, today is today, huh? Hallelujah. Boom. So, Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 says, uh, Hallelujah. I, I read from verse 1 to, to 3, yeah? Oh, let's just read from verse 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to what? Perfection. Perfection. Ah, you see it there. What does your say? To what? Let us go forward then to mature teaching and leave behind the first Mature lesson. teaching. And leave beside what? Leave behind us the first lessons of the Christian message. Aha. Uh -huh. the, 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 the baby lessons. Lessons for baby. How to walk. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let us move on towards perfection. You see it there. And, and NIV says, let us move forward to maturity. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So I said, when he's talking about this, forget about your life before Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. That one, just leave it out. It's already, it has already been dealt with. You have already gone into the water. You have been baptized and your old man is dead. So please, don't bring him up again. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, there's no need again to go back there and say, no, but you see, I was a sinner, but you know, I, I, I did this, I did that, I stole whatever, yes. So, and the Lord has delivered you from that. But now he says, let us move on to perfection. Amen. And now when he's talking about to perfection, he's not saying let us move backward. He's saying let us move forward. To maturity, to perfection. Does your say forward to maturity? To perfection. Uh -huh. Completeness or maturity? Completeness. Does your say completeness? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Then mm -hmm. it says, like your say is let us press on, isn't it? Does your say let us press on? Let us go on. Go on to grow go, up teachings. Go on to grow up teachings. Let us go on to perfection. Let us press on to maturity. Amplified says, advancing steadily towards the completeness and perfection that belongs to spiritual maturity. You see that? Mm -hmm. The completeness, the perfection belonging to spiritual maturity. So he's talking about a perfection of spiritual maturity. Amen. Mm -hmm. Then he says, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and element and eternal judgment. So, he, he, then he begins to give examples of some elementary teachings, meaning basic teachings. So these are teachings that you should know at the genesis of your faith. And then he says, and come, there comes a place now where you need to go deeper now. Amen. Amen. To learn deeper about more spiritual, more mature things. So, Peter tells us there is a place of baby Christianity where we need the spiritual milk that we may grow. Amen? And the book of Hebrews says, now let us move on to this maturity. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So what characterizes this life of spiritual maturity? Number one, indeed, separation from sin. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Separation from sin. Because that's the foundation that we have seen. Amen? Indeed. And he says, when he's talking about maturity, he's talking about what? Responsibility. He's talking about a responsible Christian. Amen. Amen. Yeah, because there are a lot of Christians who are irresponsible with their Christian lives. Babies. You know babies, eh? They take a knife and they stick into the socket. Yeah. And then when you rebuke him, <laughs> when you rebuke him, he begins to throw tantrums. He said, no, 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 you need to love me. You need to love me, don't rebuke me. <laughs> but you see, even rebuke is love. Hallelujah. But children don't understand that. Children don't understand that. So he says, so it's a place of maturity. Is It's a place of responsibility. Maturity is characterized by responsibility. And mind you, Maturity is not determined by how old you are necessarily. Wait. The older you grow in your faith, in your life, 
the mature you are expected to be. Hallelujah. But we understand that not every older, eh, not everyone who is advanced in years is necessarily mature. Mm -hmm. Ah, hallelujah. Meaning, you can be mature even if you are just one year old in Christ. Hallelujah. There are some people who can remain baby Christian for five years. Baby Christians. Just depending on milk. They are afraid of growing up. To take responsibility. And when the responsibility comes, they run away. Beginning with the responsibility of their own spiritual growth. Because you know that babies depend on someone else to feed them. Yeah? Babies depend on someone to feed them, spoon feed them, spoon feed them. But when you reach maturity now, now you must fend for yourself, so to say. <laughs> now you don't wait for someone to say, hey, hey we must pray now. Wake up. <laughs> Meaning, a place now where you take responsibility. You are now taking initiative to grow. A baby waits and says, no, mommy is not back to cook for me. But when you are mature man, you say, no, I need to cook. I need to prepare. It's time for Bible study. It's time for, for prayer. It's time for me, you know, you take responsibility. Hallelujah. Taking responsibility for your spiritual life. It begins there now. Hallelujah. Because how can you take, as the Lord Jesus said, how can you take this, this, the what? The, the speck from Brother Hunger's eye. If there's a huge plank here in my own eye that can barely fit in this room. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, the responsibility now ten, begins with you there, where you now make sure that you maintain your gown fine linen, bright and clean. As the prophet of the Lord said, when this the wedding of the Lamb comes, it speaks of responsibility because he says, finally the bride has made herself ready. Has made herself ready. Has made herself ready. Has made herself responsible. She took the responsibility and she and she she was she, she, she was faithful unto her responsibility. She was responsible. Hallelujah. Okay, we won't be able to finish tonight. I think we have to end here. Done? But this is just the beginning. We'll continue next time. Amen. Responsibility. Then I mention also wisdom. Hallelujah. We see that foolishness is bound up in the heart of a young star, the book of Proverbs say. And, you, and, and it's often easy for baby Christians to make uh, foolish decisions sometimes. That's why he says, that's why he says, don't make a baby Christian an elder of the church, lest he be enticed. Yeah? Yes, don't make him a bishop. Because soon, soon he will be buffed up. I say, I'm the bishop here. I'm go I need some food too for me to... Yes, all of you just work, 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 and then when you're done, you come and report to me. <laughs> says, no. The baby Christian must not be allowed to be a minister. Only those that have been tried. We are talking about maturity now. Because when you talk about maturity now, eh, you're talking about even facing danger head on. Hallelujah. So, wisdom is another characteristic of spiritual maturity. Discretion. Being able to distinguish between sin and righteousness. Being able to judge correctly. Being able to discern rightly. Being able to judge righteously. We're talking about spiritual maturity. Being able to distinguish between things that make your spiritual life stagnant and things that will advance your spiritual life. Being able to distinguish between things that will spoil and, dis and, and, and stain your garment and things that will keep it clean. Amen. The Lord will help us. Amen. I hope, I hope, I hope you are not ascending. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Amen. Yes, may the Lord help us. That's good. Yeah. Uh, because he's talking about spiritual maturity. And without that one, uh, the church will continue in sin. Without spiritual maturity, we will not be able to discern right between the way that is truly righteous and the, and the way that leads to hell. Because, remember, 
deception comes into the house. And when deception comes into the house, it comes with tricky, with tricks. When deception comes in, it comes in to snare us away. When deception comes in, it is aiming for the pulpit. And when deception comes in, it is aiming to keep us on this broad way. But only the spiritually immature will fall for the trap. But when you are truly mature, well tested in faith, where the Holy Spirit has truly brought you up and trained you and equipped you and sharpened you, you will not fall for deception. Amen? And if you once fall for deception and it brings you out and then he brings you up to a very good place of spiritual maturity, you will begin to realize the foolishness you were in. You begin to, to see how when you used to go to the altar to drop money, to sow a seed, you realize, ah, so this is the trick I fell for. Yeah, man. You, you, you begin to see that, huh, so this man, all he wanted was just to, hmm, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. you be, you, we, we do not even talk about correction, you know. Spiritually mature people are those that are able to handle correction. So we're not just talking about criticism, correction and even rebuke. Hallelujah. Because we said last time, I must be able to stand with the Lord alone enough to be able to rebuke you and restore you. Hallelujah. And if you are truly spiritually mature, you'll be able to take my correction and war and, and repent like Peter repented. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because what some people do is, when someone rebukes them, they say, no! You are being judgmental. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no love. How can you do that? The Holy Spirit does not make us feel guilty. <laughs> the Holy Spirit doesn't make us feel guilty. That is not brotherly love. Yet, the Lord rebuked them. He punished them harshly because of His love. And He said, He punished those that He loves, by the way. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Father, we thank You. We bless You. We give You glory and honor. Help us, O Lord, to grow on indeed forward to become spiritually mature men. Help us to become perfect men. Because there is no other way. We just have to become perfect. We just have to become mature. We just have to become complete in you. And Lord, we bless you. We thank you for such a privilege that you allow us, O oh Lord, to grow to such spiritual perfection that we may prepare for the coming of the Messiah. And we thank you, Lord, for the mighty prophet that you have sent us indeed to help us to grow and to uh, uh, prepare rightly for the coming of the Messiah. Help us, O oh Lord, to be that church, that mature bride that enters into the kingdom of God forever and enjoy eternity with our Lord Jesus and judge with him and sit with him on the thrones to judge the nations. And Lord, we bless you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who has come to equip us and to, uh, uh, to help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.